Okay, to get started, I will be using around two cups of cooked beans. You can use beans of your choice. Today, I have red kidney beans. It's what I had in my pantry. I'm also going to be adding around three to three and a half cups of cheese. And I will say this, the ratio of beans to cheese, I'll leave it up to you. You could also refry the beans before adding the cheese and making your filling, but I find it easier to keep the beans and cheese filling on the drier side. I really don't like to add liquid, and when I boil them, they're soft enough to literally mash with my hands, so that's what I'm going to do. Ultimately, the texture you're going to achieve is somewhat of a masa. It's going to feel just like a masa, and when you can form it into a ball, that's when you know you're done. Okay, on to the masa. Here I have a bowl and I'm going to be adding four cups of maseca. And after adding my four cups of maseca, I will also be adding around a teaspoon of salt. Again, I'm going to leave that up to you if you want more or less. After adding the salt, I'm going to mix it with my hands and then I will be adding three and a half to four cups of warm water. And little by little, you wanna pour the water and start to combine and knead it into the maseca. In my last pupusa video, by the way, I'll be posting that video icon link at the end of this video. I had a commenter add that if you find that your dough gets dry quick, they like to add oil when kneading the masa. So that's something you can try. Helpful tips go a long way. So thanks to that commenter. Okay, now that I've combined my masa, I'm just going to place a damp paper towel over it just to help retain the moisture so it doesn't dry out. Now this part is not necessary, but I do find it very convenient. But what I like to do is actually make all of my pupusas first. So I just like to oil down a large baking sheet and as I make my pupusas, I lay them on the baking sheet and then when I get one layer of pupusas done on the baking sheet, I add saran wrap and then start on my next layer of pupusas. Okay, now this next step is very important. This is going to allow you to work with your masa without it sticking all over the place. So here in this flat bottom plate, I have about a cup and a half of water and I will be adding a couple tablespoons of oil. And of course, water and oil don't mix, but just give it a little zhuzh there. And you want to dip your hands in the water each time you're working with your pupusas when you're starting to make them. Okay, now that that is done, here is my workstation. I have my water and oil, my bean and cheese filling, and my masa. So now it's time to make the pupusas. Oh, and let's not forget my baking sheet back there. Okay, so now I'm going to start to make my pupusas. So again, the first step should always be to dip your hands in the water and oil, grab a palm full of masa, and then between your two thumbs, you're going to press and turn the dough into a disc. Eventually what you will create is a round enough disc with a well in the middle and that's where you will be placing the bean and cheese filling. So now what you're going to do is wrap the masa around your ball of bean and cheese filling and just encase it. And you're going to turn it and sort of in a twisting motion towards the top, pinch off any extra masa that there is. 
By the way, this goes a lot faster when I'm not filming, but for the sake of showing you guys, I'm, I'm slowing it down so it does look a bit clumsy. Okay, so after pinching off the extra masa, now you're going to do the pinching and turning motion with your thumbs to form a disc again. And this is going to distribute the bean and cheese throughout the pupusa. If you notice any cracks or bean or filling pe peeking through, just work with the masa to cover it up. I'm going to pinch some extra masa off on the sides and just cover it up. And once you've formed a disc, you can sort of go back and forth between your hands while pressing. And this will eventually shape your pupusa. Now that it's done, onto the baking sheet it goes, and I will continue. Okay, so now that I have my first six pupusas, I am going to cover these with cling wrap. But before I do, I like to add a little bit of the water and oil on top of the pupusas. And this will just, again, keep the pupusas from drying out. Okay, so I'm nearing the end of all of my masa and filling, but I wanted to show you, should this arise when you're making them, my dough is starting to dry out, so all you want to do is just dip your hands in the water and oil and sort of work it into the masa until it's pliable and workable again without cracking. And it's as easy as that, no worries. So keeping the moisture in the masa, and that is probably the easiest way to do it while you're on a roll making these pupusas. Okay, 
So now it's time to cook these pupusas. I'm going to be using my nonstick griddle. And if you are using a stove comal, you want to cook them on a gradual medium heat. I'm going to set the temperature on my griddle to 375 degrees, somewhere in between 350 and 400. I might adjust it, but you do not want to cook these on high because pupusas do take time to cook. You want to make sure the middle is cooked well. So if you cook them too high, then they'll burn on the outside and be raw in the middle. Okay, so it's been about five minutes so far, and I just wanted to give you a close-up look at what the masa and the pupusa is going to be doing. Eventually, you're going to see your masa sort of rise and fall, and some of the cheese may ooze out. Those are all good indications that the steam and the heat is at the middle of your pupusa, and that's what you want, because that's what's going to melt the cheese, that is what's going to cook the inside of the masa. And as you can see, the cheese is starting to bubble up. And again, this is an indication that the heat is getting through to the middle. So I'm going to let these go for another five minutes and then flip them over. So here again, you can see that the pupusa is rising and falling, the cheese is oozing out. These are all good signs that the middle is cooking well. Okay, so my pupusas are done, and I know which one I want. The one with the nice crusty cheese bond on the outside. Those are my favorite. So the best way to eat pupusas is with a little curtido and salsa. And I will have both recipes at the end of this video with a video icon that you can click on, and it'll take you straight there. I will say this. I am no professional when it comes to making pupusas, but I certainly do love to eat them. Will this stop me making them? No. Will I still go to my local pupuseria to enjoy a nice authentic pupusa? Absolutely. But I do encourage you to try this recipe. It's a good place to start. Now it's time to dig in and with my clean hands, no fork required, I'm just going to rip off a piece of the pupusa, get a little bit of the curtido and salsa, and have at it. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching. Hey guys, you can click on the video icons for more recipes or you can click on my picture icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.